That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Birth slash Rebirth, uh, the directorial debut of Laura Moss, which premiered at the 2023 Sundance Film Festival, uh, is being released August 18th, 2023, courtesy of Shudder. Good job, Laura. I really liked this movie. Yeah, this was uh, appealing in a lot of different ways. You've seen it twice now. Yes. The story, a morgue technician successfully reanimates the body of a little girl, but to keep her breathing, she will need to harvest biological materials from pregnant women. When the girl's mother, a nurse, discovers her baby alive, they enter into a deal that forces them both down a dark path of no return. Mm -hmm. That was from IMDb. That's the full story. Uh, except the morgue technician is, she's a doctor. I think she's a pathologist. Um, yes. That, Dr. That, that, Rose Casper. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is the story. So there is a nurse who works in a hospital played by... Judy Reyes. And she has a young daughter, like a six-year-old. Leela. Mm -hmm. Who suddenly dies from bacterial meningitis. But the babysitter has her. So by the time Ruthie... I'm sorry, what's the mom's name? Celia. 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 Yeah. It's, by the time Celia gets to the hospital, which is also the hospital she works in, her daughter has died. So, of course, uh, she wants to see her child, but the morgue technician, Dr. Casper, is like, oh, your daughter already went to the medical examiner. And it's the weekend, so good luck. Talk to records on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, of course, Celia goes to records on Monday, and they're like, girl, we can't find your child. So, <laughs> Celia goes back to the morgue at the hospital she works in, and they're like, we're sorry, we don't know where she is. So, Celia confronts Dr. Casper in the parking lot, and she drives off. So Celia follows her home. This is in the trailer. Mm -hmm. Waits by the front door. And when the doctor goes into her apartment, Celia busts in. And what does she see? Her daughter in a hospital bed tied to like machines, which is in the trailer. So the doctor tells her what she's doing. She's working on a treatment to reverse death. And immediately the mom, who's a nurse, says, well, let's get to work. So the bulk of the film is the two of them trying to keep this girl alive and they have to get material, uh, which we'll get into, but... A material to create a serum that the... Will the, keep the girl alive. And not just the girl, a pig named Muriel. But at a point, they run out of material and the girl dies. So the mom, the nurse, goes to extreme measures and we can get to it. But she inadvertently kills a pregnant woman mm -hmm. to get her placenta. Played by Brita Wool. So the end of the film is the, the nurse and the doctor talking about, well, let's get to work. So as the audience, we can assume they're going to move forward, keeping this girl alive for as long as they can and as many times as they can. I thought, oh, I didn't even give my pull quote. You sure didn't. Damn. Well, my pull quote, birth, rebirth, is an intriguing take on the Frankenstein story that's well worth a watch. Mary Shelley would dig it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, mine was a provoking, perverted homage to the formidable fealty of motherhood. Um, and it also made me think that mm, in positioned and from this, under this lens, this perspective, it's like every motherhood is a Frankenstein story itself. You know, I think I liked a lot about this film, but pertaining to the story, one of the things I really liked is the science behind what this doctor is doing. Because in most stories like this, like a Frankenstein type story, we, we just reviewed one. The angry black girl and her monster. And, and then Yorgos Lanthimos has poor things about to come out, which is, the book is very interesting. I can't wait to see the film. But usually they revolve around like, oh, we need a high amount of electricity to like, you know, whatever. But this movie actually like, you know, of course the science doesn't exist as far as we know, but um, the way it's sold, I, it felt very smart. It Because it also crosses other genre boundaries because it kind of is a vampire story too, really. And then I think it's an effective thriller mm -hmm. because I, there was a lot of tension for me uh, in suspense watching this nurse and even the doctor trying to do these things they're doing. Well, the most interesting thing I think is the relationship between the two women. And I would agree. That, like, it was really interesting watching this mother who... I mean, because when you think about it, like, this lady kidnapped my dead child. And then immediately when she sees that her child might be saved 
and could be alive again. She switches so fast. But the way, I think it's a testament to the actor playing the nurse. Oh, Judy Reyes is great. Yeah. She did a great job. She was just in Smile recently. Yeah, yeah I really liked her. Um, but yeah, she plays it in a way that was very believable. But also the psychological portraiture of the character, because we learned that she, uh, Leela is, uh, she had in vitro. Well, she's she had a geriatric pregnancy, so the idea that she, there's no father. This is just this is the her only yeah. connection, her only child that she's probably going to have. Uh, so there's a lot riding on it for her psychologically. So it's understandable that she kind of gets on board right away. And Dr. Casper, we learn, has always been fascinated with death and science. Her mother was a doctor, a biologist, and when her mother uh, was terminally ill, that's when. Dr. Casper started her experiments. But a creepy moment in the film that I think is also very smart is Celia, the nurse, come, because Celia is living with the doctor now because they are like 24 hour watch on this little girl. And then they both still go to work. So they're getting no sleep and they're just monitoring this girl. But Celia comes across some VHS tapes of Dr. Casper's experiments and she sees that she was experimenting on her own mother. But not, but it's weird because it's not like, I I really like the character of Dr. Casper. Played by Marn Ireland. Because she does, she looks creepy as hell. It seems super like socially awkward. She is. But it's very effective in showing that she's really about the science of it. I don't think she seems like a monster. She doesn't. Because there are some ethical issues here, but she doesn't seem like a monster to me. She just seems rather cold and maybe like she has some kind of social development disorder uh, potentially but yeah the thing that's creepy about watching and is what what uh, Celia recoils at watching that video of her experimenting on the dead mother is that it's, it's in the name of science and there, there doesn't you don't see how any distress about her mother passing well and Celia's like so if I didn't show up you would have done this to my daughter so mm -hmm. she is upset but then of course continues I'm just going to go through my notes the actor playing Dr. Casper Marn Ireland oh my god those eyes and the looks the faces when we first meet her she's the doctor and then she has like an assistant a guy and i think the guy interrupts oh no he does something to her and the look she gives him he, oh no when he asks to leave work his early. cell phone is ringing which he's annoyed at and he asked to leave work early because his daughter uh did something at school his kid bit somebody at school and she gives him the nastiest look and then she goes well where's your wife at school well, if your wife's at school, why do you need to go? And I was like, yeah, why do you need to go? And he goes, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> that was so good. Well, and I still like her. Uh, she's two interactions with her boss, Colleen, played like, by Lashans. Who I liked her too, because you could tell that her boss is like this bitch. <laughs> but something I didn't mention that was super creepy. So the science behind this regenerative uh, experiment is they're using fetal stem cells, but it's very important that the stem cells like match the body that they're going into, like blood type and other factors. Which is why Dr. Casper snatched this girl because she matches her own blood type and factors. So then it's like, well, why? Where is she getting this fetal, uh, the, these fetal stem cells? Dr. Casper is getting herself pregnant performing her own abortions, and then using that fetus as the material. So we see, there's one scene where we see her at a bar seduce loosely this man to get his sperm sample. And I thought that was very well done. By masturbating him in the bathroom stall and then collecting the sample in this little contraption that like goes to right in there. The, the temperature control thing, and she gives him like a blood test while she's at it. And he's the kind of man who looks like he's just happy to have... Uh, had that experience it's the most clinical it's it's like everything else she does it's very cold and clinical and, and really creepy it was very well done and then we see her go back to her apartment and inseminate herself to a, a really cool song mm -hmm. okay the one there are a couple of things that took me out first of all dr casper taking this little girl home after she knew that the mother was looking for her I thought that was stupid. But she, it is, it's it's like there are a couple of things that would have been nice to like tweak or better expand upon, but it get, does give us a really creepy scene because Judy Reyes is leaving the hospital and she sees Dr. Casper loading that suitcase in her car. That's my next thing. This doctor, Dr. Casper, every day to and from the office, she has this like XL piece of luggage 
The only thing that you would fit in that luggage is a body. Uh -huh. And I can't believe that no one has ever questioned it. Even seeing her boss, knowing that her employee is like a weirdo, mm -hmm. I thought that was odd. There were moments, it kind of reminded me of another really, it's a short film, but it's part of a anthology movie called Three Extremes, but Dumplings by Fruit Chan. Do you remember that? Where mm -hmm. Bai Ling is collecting fetuses to make anti-aging serums. Yes. But another thing that kind of made me smirk is when Celia, the nurse, gets up one morning late for work and is trying to rush to get her daughter to school, the daughter says she doesn't feel well and she has a very high fever. So her mother, the nurse, is like, oh yeah, you're not feeling well. So she picks up this sick, sweaty girl and hands her to the neighbor. Pauline. Which made me laugh. Well, like, I that's felt, how COVID keeps me. <laughs> I felt so bad for Pauline. Because while Celia's at work, the babysitter neighbor keeps calling her. But then the, her Celia's phone dies because she drops it in the toilet, which I thought was a good scene too because that's happened to me almost a couple of times, the way it happens. But the neighbor keeps calling Celia, but because her voice is going, her calls are going straight to voicemail, she doesn't realize that her daughter has become deathly ill. I thought that was very well done. Mm -hmm. And she's racked with guilt because she's like, I knew I could have called from work and I just, I just didn't. Yeah. Um, but that wig on Marn Island, is that a wig, right? That it's sitting real high in the back, but it, I, I think it adds to her crazy ass look she, and it worked for me. It's, it's, it's vampiric and, and she's very much a mad scientist. She talks about when she was a kid that she's, because Celia, the nurse, asks her, like, how did you get started in this? How did you know you wanted to be a scientist? And then she talks about, like, in the third grade or something, her mom had her cut off a starfish's, like, one of their legs. And then she realized that it's regenerative. Mm -hmm. But then she says that she went to school and tried to cut off the hamster's leg and realized that it doesn't work for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the way she says everything is like she has no emotion to her, mm -hmm. which I think is funny. But, you know, she is tender with the girl, with Leela, I noticed. And there, there, there's a kind of a comedy to it because she's not uh, a sociopath. Uh, but like when, when Leela starts, uh, when she finally wakes up out of her coma and they start, start showing her cartoons and she's, she get, becomes fascinated. It's funny, yes. And another funny moment is when Celia calls Dr. Casper at work, but Dr. Casper has like become very ill and she's in the hospital because of all her like at home abortions. Mm -hmm. So her assistant picks up her cell phone and answers it and He's like, well, who, who am I speaking with? I don't like, know if I can tell you how, what happened. And then Celia goes, well, we live together. And the reaction of the assistant's like, oh, oh. Like, it all makes sense yeah. now. The, why his boss is so, like, The cold odd. to him. Yeah, he thinks she's this <laughs> lesbian. It, yeah, I thought that was funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but th because of that infection, she is no longer able... Uh, like, her uterus is uh, a no-go for what she's been using it for. So, in desperation, uh, she searches the hospital files and finds this other pregnant woman that matches. And that is uh, Brita Wool, who's in another movie I liked called Ultrasound. Who's also a pretty important... She's an important character because they're getting... I think it's her amniotic fluid that yes. they're using to make, like, a, a bootleg serum for the daughter. Yes. Which ultimately is not good enough. So, she keep this woman keeps coming in and getting the amniotic... Uh, like the procedure, and, and they and uh, Doctor Casper keeps ruining the results. Like so that she so this poor lady is thinking there's something wrong with her pregnancy because she has to keep coming back for these invasive tests. But what I think is funny is like the I think it's like the third or fourth time they do it. She says, "Well, I'm not going to be seeing you again because I'm going to a better hospital, even though it's further away." <laughs> and she was like, uh, "She." You can tell that the pregnant lady likes Celia because yeah. they kind of bond, but she's like, I'm tired of this raggedy ass hospital. Well, because that their bond gives us one of the best lines in the movie, which is Ce Celia tells her dignity and motherhood uh, don't always line up. Yeah, I wrote that down uh, because clearly Celia is willing to do whatever she needs to do to save her daughter. So then what happens next is when the daughter dies again. Because they've run out of serum. Because they've run out of serum that works well. Celia takes her ass to that pregnant lady's house and says, hey, I know you're going to a different hospital, but I just wanted to hand deliver your medical records. I don't want you to have a bad impression of our hospital, so I want to make sure you get what you need. And the lady's like, oh, you're so sweet. Do you want to come in, have some tea? Sure. Celia drugs this lady by 
um, giving her a combination, I think of like a, or no, she gives her something to induce labor. But she gives her, uh, I think, a little bit too much because that lady ends up dying, mm -hmm. but does deliver the baby. And then that's when Celia steals the placenta. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was pretty crazy too because you can see how upset Celia is. Like, I didn't mean to kill her. I just wanted her placenta. She committed manslaughter, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so much about this movie um, I really like. Mm -hmm. There's a... Uh, the mood and the tone, the score from uh, Ariel Marks, who also recently did the score for Sanctuary and that series Last Call when a uh, serial killer stock queer New York. Oh. Uh, I th very effective. What would you give it? Three and a half. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>